So welcome to the sunny day in Sydney, um, <laughs> to the Royal Exidy Hobart Yacht Race um, long range weather forecast briefing. Um, as you heard, Mike Broughton from Pretty Fly 3 at the very end, Stan Honey from Comanche, Michael Logan from the Bureau of Meteorology, Adrian Carlin from Perpetual Loyal, uh, Juan Vila from Wild Oats and Jennifer Wells from Wild Rose, which was last year's overall winner. So Michael, obviously, will kick off with you if you can tell us uh, a bit about the weather at the start and the next day. Certainly. Uh, thanks, Guy. So conditions for the, uh, the start of this year's race, they're going to hinge very much on the next strong cold front that will come across uh, New South Wales, which will come through on Boxing Day. And the timing of that front is going to be really crucial for the conditions for the start of the race. At this stage, it looks like uh, we're currently expecting strengthening northeasterly winds for the first few hours of the race, including inside the harbour at the start of the race. And that'll be before the boats encounter what will be a strong uh, southerly change along the New South Wales coast in the first evening of the race. That southerly change looks like coming through at around 25 to 35 knots. So quite a, quite a reasonable southerly change coming up the coast. And that'll mean that the conditions we're expecting them to be choppy, wet and a little uncomfortable for the first night of the, of the race. For the spectators and the spectacle at the start of the race on Sydney Harbour, um, really again depends on the timing of that front. But we are expecting actually quite pleasant conditions for the start of the race for spectators on the harbour. Um, cloud will increase through the afternoon, but we think that the showers and the thunderstorms that come through with this front will be later on in the day. Uh, so fairly pleasant conditions with temperatures in the mid-20s for the start of the race. And then conditions as we get deeper into the race, um, particularly for Bass Strait, they're going to really depend on, on whether or not a low pressure system develops in the southern Tasman Sea, east of Tasmania on Sunday. And there's the, the, the models and the computer guidance that we've got they're not quite in alignment of whether or not that low will develop and that's going to be critical to what happens in Bass Strait. And if that low does develop, it will mean that there'll be a continuation of the strong south-southwesterly winds through Bass Strait for a longer period throughout the race. But we'll know a lot more about those conditions and particularly you know, the evolution of any low that does develop as we get closer to the actual start of the race itself. And I think it's well worth mentioning at this stage that Although there is some computer guidance that does have a low developing east of Tasmania on the Sunday, there's, there's no indication the winds for the race are not likely to be like anything like what we saw in 1998. And even if you go through all of the scenarios that the computer models have at the moment, none of them have anything that was as strong as what occurred in 1998 at this stage. So we'll obviously be watching that very closely over the next few days. But it certainly looks like um, quite reasonable confidence that will start off in, north, in building north east for the start of the yacht race. The fleet will encounter quite a strong southerly 25 to 35 knots on the first evening as they head down the New South Wales coast. Okay, so I might open the floor straight to questions. Anybody got questions for Michael or for any of our panellists? One, your uh, team's weather forecast from yesterday were saying that well, we're certainly working on, on that scenario. Obviously, we uh, we want to prepare for worst case scenario, as, um, and as uh, we said, it's basically I think we're looking at it as, as the worst case scenario, um, <coughs> the breeziest scenario. So uh, we're preparing for that, uh, but uh, we also look at different different model solutions and. Uh, and there's some models that look actually uh, that the breeze is going to be lighter after the front with time. So if, if this uh, low pressure doesn't form to the east of Tasmania. So I think, yeah, that's uh, weather-wise, that's the key. So um, now with this few days to go to the, to the start, then uh, we're just looking at scenarios. So we, we don't really have a, obviously a firm plan and uh, we know that things can, can evolve and, uh, and um, the two scenarios that we're looking at after the front is in a reality pretty much black and white, they're completely opposite. One being a stronger, strong wind that could go up to 40, 50 knots. Um, we also want to be prepared for that uh, in case it happens. 
but also there's another scenario where it could be actually live with a flight transition of these top first menus so completely completely the opposite to this first scenario. So time will tell, I'm pretty sure from, from now to the start we'll have a better idea of what's, what's going to happen in the long term. Adrian, what are you thinking about this forecast? I think my understanding was it was a favourite model that was forecasting the strong stuff in that um, yeah, it's, the, it's, it's my understanding, Mark might correct me here, but it's the European model that's, that's um, it's being more consistent with forecasting the slow. Um, it, again, the same with, with uh, Juan and Wild Oats 11, you have to really be set up. Hopefully, um, as they unfold, we're still not as close, we're still a few days out where things can change. Um, and the preferred scenario is that, that it doesn't form and that we have more moderate conditions because the first night, uh, it, you know, if it's 25 to 35, is going to be very tough on the fleet. I mean, the Hobart race is, is about, you know, being ready for these conditions and being able to stay through it, sail through these conditions, but it doesn't make them any less difficult than they are because there is, you know, south-blowing current. You know, that, that's a big consideration strategy-wise um, about keeping the boat together. Um, and getting through that first night. So particularly with these big boats here because there's, there's a lot of load on the equipment. So um, yeah, it would be nice if that load didn't form because I think that uh, we're going to have our hands full the first night anyway. Yeah, well, a few boats have been made through the first night last year, including Royal. Do you, do you describe what you're looking at for that first day and night as tougher than what we were last year? Well, it's a little different to last year. Last year was a, a, a sow easterly, but a, well, in a way, probably well, it's not that different. It's just the wind's from a slightly different direction, but it's still upwind. And last year, um, I, I was on a small on Ichiban, but uh, I know Sam might be able to and why I'm here because uh, these guys headed out to sea and probably a little more into the current. And I believe Loyal followed them out there and suffered some um, hull damage. But uh, yeah, that's that's the thing. It's it, you're not only just sailing the wind you're in the big boats are sailing the fleet as well so you know it's always tricky when one boat maybe goes to an area where you're not particularly keen to go and so that all the decisions associated with that take into a lot of variables um, including the crew of the boat and um, where the right place on the course to do this. So are these conditions um yeah <laughs> 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 Well, we're preparing for, you know, the full range of forecasts that we've seen, and we're looking forward to racing in any of them, the, except, potentially, we would uh, not eager to race in the scenarios that have, you know, a 12-hour or more period of very light air, um, because that's not our, uh, the condition that seats us best, particularly in the leftover sea. But as long as, but you know, what would favor us, I think, what we would hope to get is conditions where there really isn't a prolonged light and lumpy spell. Um, and that we've made some, last Hobart race was our very first race ever for Comanche. And um, we've made, we know how to sail the boat quite a bit better now, and we've made some small improvements here and there. And so I think we would, uh, I think we'd be a little bit better in the light stuff, but if we had to race last year's race again, I suspect that um, Oates would still beat us. And with the with the volume of the best strike potentially, are you seeing reaching conditions there or not? It depends on the particular you know model run, whether and it depends on where the boats are when the southerly change comes. But some of the runs and routes show that by the time we get to this otherly change we're on a close reach and others show that we you know we're hard in the wind the rest of the race so it varies yes certainly so i think with the, if the low does develop, I mean, it will depend very much on where it does develop, but the likely uh, thing that that will cause is it will strengthen the winds through Bass Strait and, and it will keep the strong south southwesterly winds uh, across the fleet for a much longer period of time, at least another 12 to 24 hours. So I think that's the kind of thing that you're looking for. 
and then you just have to watch how strong that low is when it actually develops, where it develops, and that'll give you a real indication of what the maximum strengths are that the, that the fleet might actually experience. But, but as a few of the, um, a few has been discussed, it's not every single, it's not every model run that is actually going for this low at this stage. So this is a long range forecast and we should keep that in mind actually as we're heading forward for this, uh, looking at this the forecast for this race. It does look a little bit more um, set in stone what will probably happen towards the start of the race, but in terms of the development of any low, yeah, that's certainly something that we'll be watching over the next few days and we'll refine, but it's a possibility that we'll be watching very closely for. And Mark, how long are you expecting the low since the staying at the start? Right now, I'd say not very long, probably by the evening or maybe early night, sometimes just meeting the front. Um, that's how it looks at, like at the moment, but obviously models change, so timing can change a little. But uh, I think they've been pretty consistent on the last rounds to, uh, to tell us that we should be able to start with the northeast and then keep it for, for a few hours and uh, yeah, maybe looking some kind of between 9 o'clock to midnight change at the moment. Have you seen anything about Wave conditions can't affect the Yeah, well, well, wave conditions will develop depending on how strong the southwesterly that follow the front will be. So again, we have the, the two scenarios um, with a with a strong southwester scenario, then obviously the, the wind waves uh, will be a big factor. Sometimes, where again with the current, you have to lose it of both speed because you you have to slow down. So. Uh, but that's, a, that's also a tactic or a scenario that you will discuss before the start and we'll, um, we'll fine tune as the conditions develop. Mark? Jennifer, you were able to give us some idea about how differently the boats are now prepared compared to 98. I know the spectre of 98 always hangs here when we talk about weather, but can you give us an idea of how different the boats are? I think we've learnt a lot about seamanship and safety from 98 and I, I, I don't believe we're looking at that scenario this year but we still have learnt a lot and I would say for on a smaller boat but all boats as well if your boat and your crew are not prepared to go and face 40 to 50 knots in, in Bass Strait or elsewhere even on the south coast of uh, New South Wales or the eastern coast of Tasmania you should not be going. It is a part of the Hobart race that you would expect that. For us, the smaller boats, we expect it at least once. We could be facing it twice. So we need to be prepared, and that is the absolute backbone of safety first in this race. Mike, can you can address that same issue? Yeah, I think also uh, a huge amount of things have changed uh, since 98. Communications, um, uh, EPIRBs, personal locator beacons, uh, trackers, uh, AIS, they're all new since 98, so you think of the difference. So as an ex-search uh, and rescue helicopter pilot, um, the amount of information to find somebody, as I used to do when I used to fly in the 90s, to what the information now, that's a huge difference. I think the training, if you go back to 98, uh, there was no uh, mandatory safety training, and there wasn't even a mandatory first aid requirement in 98 either. So all those things have, uh, uh, have happened since the 98 inquiry and they've been embraced across the world. I think the 98 race changed ocean racing to a considerable amount. My first ever offshore race was the uh, 1979 Fastnet, and that changed things hugely as well. And I think now it's a, it's a much better sport and a much safer sport. This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl. Few days to go still until the Rolex Sydney Hobart stand, but uh, still an interesting forecast. It is, and there's still quite a bit of uncertainty in the forecast. The main area of uncertainty is whether this low pressure forms off east of Tasmania after the southerly change happens the first night. Yeah, it was interesting actually, we just had the weather briefing then, and you basically said that Comanche's ready to go in any weather condition except for exceptionally light air for an extended period. Yeah, we don't like the super light air where it's blowing four knots and there's a left over sea and we're slapping around. but. Uh, there's been a wide variety of forecasts for this race and we're looking forward to racing in any of them. Yeah. I don't think any sailor really likes that condition though. The slapping around? <laughs> I think we like it a little bit less than, than others. 
<laughs> just quietly. No, no, nobody likes uh, nobody likes a driftathon. But that was the condition for the fastnet this year, and you still didn't do too awfully on IRC. But um, I mean, on overall, but IRC was pretty awful. Yeah, we did better, and we're learning to sail the boat better. But the other thing was that the fastnet was flat water. Yeah. And so the that was a little bit easier for us in the light. The, the conditions that really torture us is where it's blowing, you know, four knots and less, and there's a big leftover sea, and then you know we're slapping around. That's the, that's where we hate life. Yeah, happens happens with a fat bottom girl, but I mean, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people were hoping that there'd be a southeaster start so we could see you ripping off the start line again like last year. That was a fun one. That um, Kenny was in his element there. I bet he was. Now it is looking like a nor'easter though, so we might see her lit up down the coast instead. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. It looks like a nice day for the start and conditions and that first bit of sailing in the windy northeaster looks like lots of fun. Yeah. Now everybody is focusing again on the Wild Oats versus Comanche matchup. I think we can't help ourselves. We like to have a, a two horse race, but it's it's very different circumstances this year for both of you, I think. And there's a bunch of other very good boats exactly. um, in that class. Exactly. And so you know, Loyal, and I've navigated that boat before, yeah. and Ragamuffin, um, it's, and Rambler 88. Yes. So it's not a two-boat race, and um, the conditions, any of the conditions will suit, you know, different combinations of those boats. Plus, in any of the conditions, you know, if one boat, you know, gets off to the side a little bit and gets a bit of leverage, there's enough gain there to where... Um, It'll be a it's certain to be a mini boat race. Yeah, definitely. I think Rambler 88. Um, if the conditions are a bit breezy, it could suit her quite nicely. Yeah, they're. Um, it's a good boat, and it's a great group of sailors, and they'll be right there. And they're. Uh, they're a tough boat to beat. Yeah. Now, last week the Solus Big Boat Race, you guys missed it, and there was a lot of undercurrent about what are they doing? Why aren't they training harder? What are they doing? You know, from from the public or the sailing public as such. What are your thoughts on that? Well, our focus is on the Hobart, exactly. and so in terms of the the effort training, if you look at the total number of days sailing, I mean, we're sailing today, we're sailing tomorrow. Um, and so our crew wasn't here yeah. for the Solus race, but our crew arrived about the time of the Solus race, and we've sailed every day since. Yeah. So I think by almost any measure of effort training, we're way up there. Yeah, and this year, I think you've done every major ocean race on the planet effectively. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and a lot of training um, before each of them. So I yeah. think um, we've got a great group of guys and we've got a lot of time in the boat and a year ago and it's hard for us not to remember a year ago but a year ago the Solus race was the very first time we crossed a starting line ever yeah and there was a lot of excitement around that as well seeing you guys out for the first time and it was still exciting to see you get here this year I have to say yeah and it's it's wonderful to be here and it, it feels it doesn't feel like a year has gone by yeah. it feels like uh, last year was just a few weeks ago absolutely awesome but that said as we've mentioned there's a lot of ocean races under your belt a lot of training wild oats has changed her setup this is going to be a completely different race yeah and we're really looking forward to it our boats a tick better and wild oats has made some you know significant changes yeah. and then there's five boats in our class rags ragamuffin 100 for example she was almost brand new last year and as you mentioned rambler 88 i mean it's it's going to be absolutely awesome yeah and the, the loyal can be right there too oh i know i'm hoping she stays together this year i think they've done a lot of work on her too with her bowsprit and whatnot so yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, that should be awesome. Well, welcome. Nice to talk to you. And, um, and he's hoping for no drifting conditions. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs>